Hello there, I'm Thundaga and welcome to my How to Make a Pokemon Game tutorial series. This will be another quick tutorial, and this time we're going to cover how to set up following Pokemon in our game. First, we'll download and install the following Pokemon plugin as well as the following Pokemon sprites. After that, we'll set up all the necessary events that we need to make following Pokemon appear. Next, we'll test it all out in-game and have our new starter Pokemon follow us around. And finally, we'll touch on some of the settings that you can change for following Pokemon if you're interested in diving into the scripts a little. With all that said, let's get into it. To start, we'll need to download the following two things. First is the Following Pokemon EX plugin here on the EV Expo site. EV Expo, for those who don't know, is the awesome replacement for Relic Castle, and it's a great site for fan game resources that we will be using a lot moving forward. This plugin is so great, and it was originally created by my pal Glycopod user, and has been ported to version 21.1 by Chubbychew. You can just click the Go to Download button here in the top right corner, and then download and extract this plugin. The second thing that we need is all the following Pokemon sprites, and funnily enough, I would actually recommend downloading the Gen 9 Resources Pack here, which we covered in the last quick tutorial. The Gen 9 Resources Pack includes the following sprites for all Pokemon up to Generation 9, both Standard and Shiny. The download links for both of these plugins will be in the video description as well. And as a reminder, be sure to properly credit all resource creators. Once both plugins are downloaded and extracted, we're ready to begin installing them. As you can see, I've got both of them here in the folder with my game project. Before we get started installing the plugin though, it is a good idea to make a backup of your game just in case. That's generally always a good idea too when installing new plugins, just to be safe. Alright, I've got my backup made and I'm ready to begin installing the following Pokemon EX plugin. When we look inside of the following Pokemon EX folder here, we can see that there are three things that we'll need to copy into our game. There are data, graphics, and plugins. Since this process touches RPG Maker RX data files, let's first make sure RPG Maker is closed. I'll show you how we can copy these all over at the same time after we do a quick overview of the files here. Now first up here is the data folder, and inside of this is just the animations RX data file. This will replace our common animations to include the following Pokemon animations. If you've made changes to these animations for your game, make a backup of your animations RX data or take notes of all your changes first, since copying this file over will overwrite all of these animations. Some of these new following Pokemon animations are actually pretty great too. When you have them in your game, you can also use them in other places, like in events when characters are talking and you want them to show some emotion. I haven't made any changes to these animations in my game here, so this is cool to just straight up copy over into our game's data folder. Next are some animation graphics. These are for the animations that we just copied over into our game. These contain graphics for the following Pokemon, such as emotes, like let's see here, in Follower Emote 2, we can see that this has some smiley faces and a heart and such. This is for our following Pokemon animations. These graphics assets will live inside of our game's graphics animations folder. And last but not least here is the plugin folder with all of the scripts for the following Pokemon EX plugin. In this folder, there are also plenty of subfolders for the scripts and such like main module here, but we can cover some of these later. All we need to know right now is that we'll be copying this folder into our game's plugins folder. So let's do that. If we go to the following Pokemon plugin here, and if we select data and graphics and plugins, what we can do is just copy these. So I'm just hitting control C, we can go into our game's main root folder here and paste them with Control v and then we can hit yes to replace the animations rx data and begin copying everything over all at once and there we go we've already gone and pasted in the data the graphics and the plugins all at once and it only took like one second now that the plugin is installed let's also make sure that we go into the gen 9 resources pack and if we go into graphics characters we can see the follower pokemon sprites as well Inside of these folders, there are a ton of sprites for all of the various following Pokemon, Gen 1 through 9. As you can see here, that's a lot of Pokemon. What we can do is click the Followers folder here and the Followers Shiny folder here and copy them. Then go into our Graphics Characters folder and then go in and paste them. So what this is going to do is it's going to paste over a lot of image files, but the end result will be in our Games folder here. Let me refresh. We now have a Followers folder and a Followers Shiny folder here, each filled with a ton of Pokemon sprites. 
In order for these sprites to work with the plugin, they need to be in these folders. They need to be in Followers and Followers Shiny. With this process done though, we're basically already done setting up following Pokemon. We've got everything installed from the plugin scripts to the following sprites, so now all we need to do is set up a couple events in game. Since we get our first starter Pokemon in the lab, let's set up the following Pokemon events here on this map. The first thing that we need to do is just make an empty event and keep track of that event's ID. This will be used in the next step since we'll be taking this empty event and turning it into a follower Pokemon. So in this case, as we can see here, our event is ID 10. Let's just hit OK and place this here. The next step is to call a specific following Pokemon script command to turn on the following Pokemon. That script command is following Pokemon dot start underscore following X, where X is the ID of the event that we'll be turning into our following Pokemon. So in our case, that is ID 10. What I'm doing here now is I'm putting this script command in the water ball here after we pick our starter, so that we're turning on following Pokemon after we've picked our Totodile. We've done all that we need to do to test this out in game. Real quick, I'm going to save and let's run the game now. Let's hit playtest and hold left control to ensure that we're compiling all the scripts and let's monitor the console and see that the following Pokemon EX plugin has loaded. Perfect. Now let's go into game here and select the water ball. Okay, yes, I do want Totodile. Yay! We've got our cool starter here, and now, after we go through all of this process, we should see the following Pokemon turn on. There we go! Following Pokemon was just turned on, and we did it for Event 10, and now we have a Totodile following us! That's so cool! Hello! Aw, it loves us! It wants some affection. We saw the heart emote there and everything. One thing that's also cool about the following Pokemon plugin is that at any time, you can hit A on the keyboard to make the following Pokemon go back to its ball, or you can hit A again to bring the following Pokemon out and the following Pokemon will switch to match whatever is the first Pokemon in your party. But since we only just got our starter, the only Pokemon that's following us is Totodile. Look at that, it's so cute! Oh, it's jumping with joy. This is just such a cool plugin. And that's basically it for the following Pokemon installation and setup. If you just want to see following Pokemon in your game, then with what we've covered already so far, you're good to go. If you want to change some of the settings for the following Pokemon though, stick around. It's very easy to modify things in this plugin, because it was so well made, through the many config script files. To edit these settings, it's as simple as going into our plugins folder and then going into following Pokemon EX here and then going into the configuration folder. From here, we can just edit these Ruby scripts. If you double click them, nothing will happen because that's gonna try to run them and they don't do anything on their own. Instead, we can open and edit these with any text editor we want. I'm partial to Notepad++, so what I'm going to do is right click here and then go to Edit with Notepad++. When we make any changes, we can just save the script and then, when we run the game, make sure to hold left control and recompile. Kind of like how we treat PBS files. There are five config files that we'll be going through with varying levels of scripting complexity. The most approachable and straightforward here is the first one, the 000 underscore config file. This is the one that you'll most likely want to edit. This script contains a ton of variables that we can set to control and toggle other things in the following Pokemon plugin. There's explanations for all of them in here too, which is really great. Some of the highlights for these settings are animation IDs for all of the follower emotes, the key name to toggle followers on and off, which is defaulted to jump up, which is the A key, the key to cycle through party members, which is default unset at nil here, but this could be rebound to another key name such as jump down, or this cycle could even be changed to jump up and the toggle could be set to nil if you'd prefer. There's color tone changes on the follower for various status effects, and we can toggle this on and off here. There are toggles for if the follower is always animating or always turning to face the player, which I actually kind of like when that's enabled. There's also a toggle for if the follower slides into battle instead of us needing to throw out a Pokeball, since they're already out of their ball and following us. And there's also a list of all the various Pokemon that are set to levitate and float behind the player while they surf. Flying-type Pokémon are automatically set to follow during Surf, by the way. There is a list underneath, though, to exclude specific Flying-type Pokémon from following while surfing. For our game here, I want to make it so the follower always faces the player, so let's instead set this to true. What we can do now is we can save our changes and then run our game and hold the left control key so it recompiles everything when we're running the game. This will load our changes. 
Now when we move with our following Pokemon, we can see that they always turn to face us after the move. I like that. I think that feels a little bit better personally, but hey, that's all personal preference. And that's it for the main config script. For these four other config scripts, I want to go through these quick as overviews since these are the configs that we're probably less likely to change. There's Dialogue Item, which contains a general list at the bottom here for the items your follower Pokemon can pick up and find in the world. At the top, there's also a specific check for maps with the name Battle in them, and only granting Pokeballs, which is a weirdly specific check that I didn't know existed. In theory though, you could use this logic to set up some specific item finds per map or type of map. Like if the map name contained Root, then all Roots would draw from a different item pool. The next script is Dialog Specific, and this controls when specific follower dialogue and animations should play given certain conditions. For example, if the Pokemon is poisoned, then specific poison animations and poison dialogue will play. There's additional checks below too for some extra fun dialogue, like if the current map has the metadata flag for Pokemon Lab or Pokemon Center, or if we're home and our map name contains our player name, like Red's House. You can see that the follower references the maps with specific dialogue here, like our Pokemon looks happy to see the nurse. If it's unclear by the way, the brackets 1 here at the start for some of these dialogues is where the Pokemon name gets fed in when this line is loaded. So in game this would say Totodile looks happy to see the nurse. And if you keep scrolling down you can see that there are way more examples that you can reference for specific dialogue. The next script after that is Dialogue Generic. This just controls the dialogues and animations that will play when we talk to our follower, which are chosen at random if no specific conditions are met. These animations here each contain lists of dialogue that can be chosen, and underneath there are move routes that are defined for each of these animations. I'd recommend not messing with these move routes too much if you're unfamiliar, because these are pretty easy to break. The final script here is the disappearing script, which just controls all the conditions for when the follower should disappear or reappear when refreshing it. If a condition says next false, then that will hide the follower, and if it says next true, then it will show the follower. For example, near the top here, there's a check to hide the follower if we're on a bicycle. I haven't really edited many of these config scripts aside from the main config script here, but it's great that this plugin is so flexible and allows you to make all these changes. And that does it for this quick tutorial on the following Pokemon plugin. Thank you so much for watching. If you learned something from this tutorial, please remember to like and subscribe. To access my tutorial website, please check the link in the video description. As a reminder, this tutorial video was for Pokemon Essentials version 21.1, so in the future, it's possible that the layout of some things could be changed. In general though, this series should get you where you need to go when it comes to making your own Pokemon fan game. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you learned something, and I hope you have a good one. Best of luck to you in your Pokemon fan game endeavors. Bye now!